What's up, everyone? My name is Lauren Wilson. I am a white belt in jiu-jitsu at Red Hawk Academy. Welcome to my channel, Running Jesus in Jiu-Jitsu. I just wanted to have this vlog to share my jiu-jitsu journey and kind of what I've learned because I always believe in constructive conversations and learning from each other. First and foremost, I started jiu-jitsu, so it's only been about two months. I have my first stripe, so I'm a white belt with one stripe. My first coach was Coach JX Soto. He has since uh, moved on, and now I have Coach Ryan. So they were both purple belts. It's a great gym with great culture. Everyone's very supportive. Everyone's very patient. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about my journey. So the reason I, I wanted to do jiu-jitsu is I've been an MMA fan. I've been a UFC fan. I've watched the Timbo Sugar podcast now for about six, seven, eight years, however long they've been been doing it and everything. But my main sport is running, and I was always really, really scared to get hurt because if I if I got hurt and wasn't able to run, I knew that my mental, emotional, and spiritual health would start to take a toll. However, the more research that I that I did and the more people that I spoke to it really seemed like the common theme and the common pattern was, yes, there is a probability of getting hurt. There's no such thing as zero risk. However, with that said, a lot of it comes down to the culture of your gym. And does the leadership set a culture where, one, where it's safe and that you're not really going to go up against a bunch of hotheads and everything I saw, I've heard about Red Hawk Academy and, and even since joining is they just don't put up with that leadership does a really good job of setting the tone and setting the culture and, and embodying it and if someone is going off the rails and there's a hothead they're asked to leave right away and so I kind of heard that through the grapevine before even joining so I felt a lot better about it watched a lot of YouTube videos and, and felt relatively safe, watched some professional tournaments on YouTube as well, ADCC, IBJF, or whatever it is, felt relatively safe, and I was like, that looks really extreme, and they're not getting hurt. And so for me, being a lifetime runner, yes, I enjoy lifting weights, but not really, to be honest with you. So I wanted to do something where I could stay strong but have fun at the same time and challenge myself in a different way because I haven't really done another sport besides running since the eighth grade. And so it's been a long time um, of just really just training for running. And so I wanted a different challenge. And then last but not least, the philosophical reason was a lot of men might be able to relate with this is – there's, a, there's an underlying intensity and there's a lot underlying anger for people that want to achieve great things. And, and sometimes that, that intensity, you can't always control it. And it'll come out on a family member or it'll come out on a friend or it'll come out on a coworker or it'll even come out on yourself in a way that isn't the most constructive. It comes from a good place good place. It comes from a place of love. It comes from a place of wanting better for yourself and for those around you. However, it doesn't always come off that way. And then you do some damage and you have to just use a lot of time trying to backtrack and do these different things. So anyways, what I realized with jiu-jitsu is you have to control that intensity. You have to find the perfect balance between intensity and calm aggression and calm because if you're too much of a hothead you're gonna go in there you're gonna get gassed out and you're gonna get tapped out next if you're too calm you're gonna go in there you're gonna get thrown around and you're gonna get tapped out and so that was one of the the deciding factors of me wanting to join now going into my journey again I'm only been eight weeks I go about two times a week first class I went to a beginner class and right away, we just start doing backflips on the ground. We start doing shoulder rolls. I have no idea what's going on. And I'm just thinking to myself, whoa, this is the beginner class. I'm just falling on my back. And then we start drilling, and I have literally no idea what is going on. And then after we drill for about 20 to 30 minutes, we what we 
do what we call rolling or we scrimmage and try to put into practice and start trying to play the game of jiu-jitsu. At the time, I had literally no idea what was going on. So you always start off on your feet, and then you go to the ground. The, the game goes to the ground. And again, I had no idea. I was very confused. I was literally just getting thrown around, using athleticism. My heart rate was through the roof. I was breathing extremely hard. Now, I'm not in the best shape that I've ever been in. However, for context, I can still run a half marathon right now at a sub six minute per mile pace. And I was just gassed. Uh, I really didn't even know enough about the sport to ask questions or anything like that. But I left my first session and I was hooked right away. Even though I got thrown around, even though I didn't know what I was doing, I had just enough camaraderie and enough community and enough progress and enough craziness, to be honest with you, to say, man, I can't wait to come back. And so I'd go and I, and I gone on BJJ Fanatics and I bought the Donaher course, Pin Escapes and Turtle Escapes. And so everything that I saw, everyone that I talked to, they said, this is a long journey. This is a 10 plus year journey. And you kind of think about, whoa, what were you doing 10 years ago? And everything you've done over the last 10 years, it's like, wow, you've you've done a lot. And I, I'm going to, if I want to go far in this sport, maybe brown belt, maybe black belt, three to five days a week for 10 years, that's a lot of dedication. That's a lot of commitment. And I guess that was another reason that I didn't want to join because I don't do anything halfway. I have my MBA, I pass all four parts of the CPA exam, I'm a management consultant, I've taken courses at Harvard and got high honors, I've run ultra marathons, 50 miles at a sub 7 minute pace, 100 kilometers at a sub 7 minute, 15 second per mile pace. I'm just not one of those people that does stuff just to do stuff. I, would, I do stuff to excel. And so that was another reason I was hesitant because I understood the commitment that I was about to make, and I wanted to be in the proper headspace and the proper season of life for that commitment. And so, right, I do the first class, I go back home, I buy the BJH Fanatics course, and, and everyone is saying for the first one to two years, practice defense. That's it. Practice defense and practice escapes. And I was like, dang, that's it? I don't get to do no offense? No. And why is that? Because... The fundamentals are what's key. Understanding the concepts, understanding the principles of the sport. And, and I had to humble myself for a second and think back to when I first started running to over 20 years ago now and how green I was and how I didn't know anything. And that's where I am now with jiu-jitsu. Yes, I have the underlying athleticism aerobic endurance, anaerobic endurance, strength and power, but the sport of jiu-jitsu, I know pretty much nothing at that point. And so what, what these videos were saying is, if you're not confident in your defense, as you change positions, as you go from position to position in offense, you open yourself up to a little bit of risk. And if you're not confident in your defense, you're going to be hesitant, and that's going to put you at more risk to get flipped from offense to defense in a quick second and a quick time span. And so you have to be bulletproof and confident in your defense. And so what what does defense look like? You're going to end up on your back a ton. One is open guard. And so that's when you're on your back, kind of in the turtle position, arms and legs not connected. And then you're trying to get into, into closed guard. And so... What I realize really quickly is there's infinite number of possibilities in jiu-jitsu, and everyone learns differently, and I've heard there's things called systems, and there's things called principles, and there's techniques or sequences, and it, it sounds crazy on the internet. Like Some people believe it's just like one or the other, like you learn a sequence or you learn a system or you learn principles, and to me it makes sense to learn all of them. You need to know all of them. You need to have a couple sequences in your tool belt on offense and on defense. 
you need to know the principles of the sport. What is what is the point of the sport? And then you need to know the systems because jiu-jitsu is games within games. It's positions within positions. It's offense and defense nonstop at the same time. It's just the relative percentage of your offense position or your defensive position at any given time is constantly changing. And then what do I mean by games within games? There's a standing game. There's an open guard game. There's a closed guard game. There's a side control game, north-south game, arm lock sequences, leg lock sequences, guillotine sequences, on the back game, and sequences. And so what the what where I'm at now and what I'm trying to do is I feel really good with my open guard. I feel really good at maintaining elbow knee connection. And I feel really good in closed guard. And then I feel really good if someone's on their back in open guard on offense, I feel good transitioning to side control. Now where I'm at is is learning to sequence a few more moves and learning some more principles. But this is the biggest principle that I want to end this video with because I didn't understand what the game was even about. And so jiu-jitsu always starts off on the feet. And the point is to get to the ground because on the ground, you minimize explosiveness. If you watch football players, you watch basketball players, they're jumping all over their place. They're able to use their power. And so by getting to the fight to the ground, you're able to neutralize a larger opponent's force and power and explosiveness. That's the first concept. Once you're on the ground, you're trying to neutralize your opponent's legs. The legs are really, really powerful. And so you want to get past your opponent's legs and control their hips. That's how you take their legs away. Then you want to start to work your way up to, to their neck. And again, this is from a white belt perspective. This is very, very beginner. At the higher belts, the arms, the legs, everything is vulnerable. But at the white belt level, there's not a lot of uh, arm bars. There's not a lot of leg locks. There's not a lot of heel hooks going on per se. So when you're a white belt versus white belt, these are the basic concepts that I have so far. Then you're after you pass the legs and you can neutralize the hips, you're working your way either from side control into full mount or you're working from side control into some submission game. And then... Once you control, you want to take the arms out and then try to get the choke or try to get the submission. So that's kind of the basics right right there. Um, I'll try to get some footage and some videos because that's going to help with the learning process a lot more. But I just wanted to, to do this first episode, get it out of the way, and introduce myself and tell you guys where I'm at and, and, and how much I particularly love this sport.